Oh, he's a white guy. That explains it. Okay, sure. Hey, if you want to live with that delusion, that's fine. I can't make you stay. I'm not mad at you. Have fun with your fantasy. Oh, glad to see the rest of you still here. So why are these characters so terrible? Look, I would love to give you some high-minded thing about how they are a disservice and an insult and they're pandering. And, and while that is part of it, you don't want to hear some white knight speech from me. That kind of crass yeah, virtue signaling is nothing but a less overtly nefarious form of toxic masculinity. No. The majority of why I can't stand these characters is simple. It's because they're boring. They're cardboard cutouts with no actual character, turnkey billboards trying to comment on the complex topic of modern day American race and gender relations. And while that should be insulting to the people they're pandering to, it also causes the writing to be hackneyed and not entertaining for the rest of us. Because of the pandering, I now have to endure terrible, shallow writing. The people doing these swaps think they are astoundingly clever. Hi, right, listen up, gentlemen, we're gonna make Ghostbusters, but not your grandpa father's Ghostbusters. No, no, are you sitting down? What's that? Did your mind just buy me dinner? Because I'm going to blow it. We're going to make Ghostbusters what we're going to cast all women. Gender swaps are tight. Huh? Since they think the very nature of the swap is so incredibly monumentally unique and interesting, they don't bother to flesh out the character because why would they? 80% of the writing is already done. I mean, look at this character that used to be a man and now it's a woman. I've mentioned this in the past with Batman vs. Superman. The people who made that movie thought them fighting was so cool, the rest of the movie would just write itself. It did not. So I've mentioned blacked in America in the past, but it's always been an offhanded example to illustrate some other point. And people tell me that's an offensive name. I know. It's meant to hurt a little bit to illustrate the point. Let's get into it deeper today, though, because this character really sucks now. As I have mentioned in the past, he is no longer Sam Wilson. He is no longer the Falcon. What you want, Black Falcon? It's Black Falcon. That's the Black Falcon then! Marvel decided he was going to be Black Steve Jr. And when I have mentioned this in the past, again, people have defended this 2D character saying he had a great growth arc. He totally earned the shield of Captain America. He lived up to Steve's legacy. Oh, so... Are, we're saying Sam sucked before? Uh, you see, when you say that one character has to live up to the legacy of another or earn their suit and mantle, you're implying that they weren't good enough before. Marvel told us that the very first original black character was not good enough on his own and had to grow to be worthy of White Steve's shield. And I'm not the one putting the race tones on the situation. Marvel did that also. They reduced Sam to being just a skin color and talk constantly about his race and Steve's race. Isaiah Bradley even tells him, You got that white man's shield. The Falcon Show was completely about race. Never mind his history and military military background, never mind his skill as one of the first pilots of the wingsuit, never mind his job as a counselor helping other soldiers with PTSD, nope, he's just black. You know I don't play with these white folks. They even call him Black Falcon multiple times in the show. His growth journey, such as it is, was to earn the holy right to fill race quotas on screen. How noble, how majestic, how awe-inspiring. Hey, Pac, do you think Disney is just pandering with this character now? They don't give a fuck about us. Like and subscribe. Not only is the constant race argument oversimplified and boring, by continuing to tell us that this character is not as good as Steve Rogers, they're just telling us we should be watching old Captain America movies. They are quite literally reminding us over and over that this character sucks and doesn't live up to the previous hero. Why in the hell would I want to watch this guy then? Do you see how this is boring? He has one quality, his skin color of birth, which is beyond his control, and he's not as good as Steve. Great. Can't wait to keep watching this guy. When Steve first told me about the shield, the first words I said were, it feels like it belongs to someone else. That someone else is Steve. What makes this character so much worse than the other gender-swapped heroines is that we already knew a good version of him. Characters like She-Hulk, Sylvie, Ironheart, they're brand new and they were slapdash garbage right from the start. Falcon 
isn't new, and he used to be cool, which makes his new use as race bait all the more disappointing. My son was Falcon for Halloween a couple of years ago over all the other Avengers. He was so excited. Falcon can fly. That's his favorite superpower. He's got cool high-tech goggles, a sweet drone, and a pair of machine guns. What else could a boy want? It was kind of weird. We actually went and asked one of our black neighbors about it. That's right. One of... I know multiple black people. That's how you know I'm not a racist. But we did. We asked our neighbor, like, is this, like, are, is this okay? Are we appropriating? What's the protocol here? She was thrilled. She's like, why would I be upset? You're telling me Falcon is so cool he appeals to all kids? That's amazing. This is why trying to give Sam an upgrade to Captain America makes no sense. Well, maybe it actually does make sense, but only for this new version. You see, new Sam is sad and broke and suffering from systemic struggleitis, which is the only way that Hollywood knows how to portray black people and he has no machine guns. This new Sam does need an upgrade. He needs to be upgraded back to old Sam. Again, this all made the show boring. It should have moved quickly because it was a continuation of two characters we already knew, except we didn't know one of them. The show dragged because new Sam basically needed an origin story where we'd discover how he's discriminated against and poor and sad that he'll never be as good as Rogers. There has never been another Steve Rogers, has there? Oh, also, he was black. That was a subtle addition. Marvel is amazing with the setup. Did you guys notice in the previous movies that he was black? They have been sprinkling that in from the beginning. The setup is incredible show sam is like a completely different guy wait do you think he could be a scroll no that would be funny but no once again i need to point to miles morales as an example of what people should be doing he's not a race swap he is not a caricature of black culture he is his own person with his own backstory and the box office numbers prove people love it sam of course is not the only boring swap lately we also had black tinkerbell who was a character swap in a swap tacular movie the lost boys aren't boys anymore wendy's a super assertive girl boss peter's um what is Peter? Mama Coblination. A Coblination. And yet, despite the incredibly, astoundingly interesting subversions they pulled off there, the movie still sucked. Why? Because the writing sucked. Because they figured the movie was already bursting at the seams with incredible ideas like subversion and subversion. And also, subversion. The audience's brains couldn't have handled a good writing cherry on top of this cinematic Sunday. Of course, Black Tinkerbell brings up another good point about Disney insulting while pandering. They only want to swap the most popular characters. You see this fairy right here? Her name is Iridessa, and she is an original black character with cool powers who is part of a diverse team that has averted numerous disasters facing Pixie Hollow. Direct to video, of course. Did Iridessa get attention? No, because Tinkerbell is more popular. So Disney once again did not develop an existing original black character, they just lazily palette swapped a more popular white one and said, You're welcome. You're welcome. To be clear, and I'm gonna say this slowly, this is not a case of, uh, come on, why do black people need two black characters? They've already got one. It's a case of Disney not respecting the black characters enough to invest in them. So instead, we get these basic, no character palette swaps that have as much charm and personality as an ice cube. Again, I am not offended on behalf of the black community. I think y'all ought to be, but you guys can handle your own business. Deal with your problems yourselves like adults. My problem is that every movie is now filled with these cheaply written characters. There is no interesting plot, there is no character development, there is nothing. It's just content, followed by more content, mixed with some pandering, ending with an ad for next content, and current year American social politics, delivered with the nuance of a cluster bomb. Same thing goes for Snow Blanca. Actress Rachel Zegler has said how important it is that she be in this role, so little girls of any color know they can be Disney princesses too. I just mean that it's no longer 1937. First of all, where have you been for the last 15 years? Disney has been working on this problem with multiple original, well-loved characters. But sure, keep telling yourself that you're the one that broke the ceiling or whatever. Oh, she is insufferably egotistical. Seriously, don't watch the interviews. They are excruciating. But once again, Elena of Avalor is over here like, Am I a joke to you? And also Wish is coming out this fall and it looks great so far. But <laughs> thank goodness Rachel's here. What unites all of these swaps is shallow relativistic morality. You see, if you can identify a bad thing and point and loudly proclaim, hey everybody, that thing is bad. 
You can tell yourself you're a good person because only bad people do bad things. But that's not what we're talking about. Ah, but that's what I'm talking about. But you didn't prove that Vanilla's the best. I didn't have to. I proved that you're wrong. And if you're wrong, I'm right. But you still didn't convince me. It's that I'm not after you. I'm after them. That is from a movie called Thank You for Smoking. And I, I don't know, that's, it seems to be on the radar for some people. If you have not seen this movie, finish my video, obviously, then go check it out immediately. You owe yourself a watch. It's excellent. Moral relativism is so easy. Watch this. Everyone, everyone listen to me. Racism is bad. Minorities have it very hard in this country because capitalism. Whew, I am a good person. I am not one of those filthy racists holding back underrepresented communities and our unhoused neighbors. What are you actually doing to help those people? Well, you see, I'm raising awareness of the bad thing. Hashtag blessed. My favorite compliment about these hollow productions is that they are important. When someone tells you a movie is important, it means it's vaguely racially charged and nothing else. Why are race swaps important? And before you say, so people can see themselves, ask yourself if that answer implies that skin color is more important than character, because these recent swaps have no character. Hell, you don't even have to identify an actual bad thing. You can fight against something vague like inequality and then pat yourself on the back. Another cool thing about this constant race talk is it makes for a great cover for terrible productions. See, when they inevitably bomb, you can just gaslight the audience into thinking that they're the ones that think about race all the time. You see this in headlines every time a cheap pandering casting is announced and anyone who isn't slobbering all over it is wrapped up neatly as the racist backlash or the sexist backlash. See? All criticism is now taken care of. I was trying to see if there was a formal fallacy for this, and it doesn't appear that there is one. I have seen it informally referred to as a Kafka trap or a circumstantial ad hominem, although I would put it more in a begging the question type category. Begging the ad hominem. New band name, I call it. Basically, you outright call somebody like a racist or a sexist, or you just heavily imply it, and then when they deny it, you use the denial as proof of the conclusion you already had anyway. I ran into this recently when I went and saw The Little Mermaid, and it was terrible, and I reported that it was terrible, and several people said, of course I wouldn't like it. When I asked them to just have the balls to call me a racist, these cowards acted like they would never dream of such a thing. But since we're on the subject, the fact that you're so defensive means you must indeed be a racist, Greg. One particular coward came to just say his piece and then told me I don't want a confrontation after starting one, but told me his mom always said a hit dog will holler, which I had to look up and it basically means the same thing. A denial is somehow proof of the accusation. Basically, race baiters are spineless pieces of sh This is also known as the he who denied it supplied it fallacy. For research purposes, I did respond to everyone who implied that I was a racist and not one of them had the courage to just say it. In fact, those that did respond would deny it and then wonder why I'm the one that cares so much. I have to give credit to one person who was honest enough to admit that I never brought up race, but they saw through it. Breaking news, I'm a racist because I didn't talk about race. When talking about the Little Mermaid trailer a few months ago, I also did not bring up Bailey's race because that trailer was so awful, why would I dilute my criticism with shallow superficial crap? Inevitably, however, an NPC did call me a racist and when I asked them to link to the timestamp where I mentioned race, they said, you didn't have to. Oh, okay, okay. Um. Is the racism in the room with us right now? Honestly, it's freeing in a way because these people can never be made happy. So you and I should not try to play by their rules because they change them daily anyway. What I hope these studios realize soon is that these people can never be happy. And the recent box office numbers show they are leaving the rest of us behind while they try to chase this fantasy audience that can never be pleased. So there it is, I hate this new trend, but now I have talked enough and I wanna know what you think about these swaps. Do you hate them as much as I do or do you find that they have some redeeming qualities? If you are not white or not a man, are these new characters working for you? I look forward to reading your thoughts. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.